the conviction of popular dancehall artist Vibes Cartel has been upheld. Viewers and subscribers, greetings, love and respect from near the vice on the number one connection entertainment. Big up all of my loyal viewers and subscribers, they must stay tuned to the channel. Well, if I respect and love on another thing, go. so people, the moment we have been waiting for so long is finally here. But unfortunately, it didn't work out how we really want it to work out. However, Vibes Cartel will remain the king of dancehall. We know that. Dancehall know that. Every fan of music know that yeah. I wonder what it's like for all I'm loved ones, all I'm family, I'm kids them. You know what I mean? Trust me, I know an easy feeling, but we have to stay strong, we have to stay tough. And the person we know Vibes Cartel as, we just have to stay tough because that's Gaza. Stay near, remember, one connection or no connection. <laughs> Yo, Peter. Me won't go. Me won't go. Listen, you can't get. After a near two year wait, the Court of Appeal this morning handed down a judgment agreeing with the murder conviction and life sentence of the popular entertainer. The court also upheld the convictions and sentence for dancehall artist Sean Storm and two other men, Kaira Jones and Andre St. John. With the ban and public gatherings of more than 10 persons as part of the Mathers, the conviction of popular dancehall artist Vibes Cartel has been upheld. After a near two year wait, the court of appeal this morning handed down a judgment agreeing with the murder conviction and life sentence of the popular entertainer. The court also upheld the convictions and sentences of far dancehall artist Sean Storm and two other men, Kaira Jones and Andre St. John, with the ban and public gatherings of more than 10 persons as, as part of the measures to contain the spread of the coronavirus. This decision by the Happy Court was handed down via a conference call between the panel of three judges prosecutors and the attorneys for the four men. President of the Court of Appeal, Dennis Morris, Frank William and Patrick Brooks heard the appeal. In April 2004, Cartel, whose real name is Adija Palmer, Sean Storm, given name Sean Campbell, Jones and St. John were convicted for the August 2011 killing of Clive Lizard Williams at a house in Heavendale, St. Andrew. They were all sentenced to life in prison by since retired High Court Judge Justice Lennox Campbell. He ordered that Cartel serves 35 years in prison before he becomes eligible for parole. Sean Storm, Jones and St. John were ordered to serve 25 years each before being eligible for parole. Cartel trial among Jamaica's longest. The Vibes Cartel trial was one of the longest criminal trials in Jamaica's history. Prosecutors led evidence including vice notes and text messages as well as videos taken from several phones that Williams was lured to the Heavendale house and beaten to death over two missing firearms. According to prosecutors, Williams and another man who was the star witness were summoned to the house to account for the guns. The main witness testified that he ran from the house while he and Williams were being questioned about the guns. He gave evidence that when he left, he saw Williams lying on the ground, not moving. Cartel and his co-accused denied any involvement in the killing. But the near six-month trial ended with a 10-to-1 decision to convict the four men on allegations that one member of the jury tried to bribe his counterpart to return a not guilty verdict. Four days after the trial ended, lawyers for the four men went to the court of appeal to challenge the convictions, pointing to several missteps by Justice Campbell. They argued, among other things, that Campbell erred when he allowed the trial to continue after he became aware of the 
bribery allegations and what when the 11 member jury was sent to consider their decision at 3.45 p.m. It placed them under pressure to arrive at a rushed verdict. They argued, among other things, that Campbell aired when he allowed the trial to continue after he became aware of the bribery allegations and that when the 11 member jury was sent to consider their decision at 3.45 p.m. it placed them under pressure to arrive at a rushed verdict. So viewers tell me what you think in the comment era. I really need no thoughts. I really need no thoughts. And as I say, we have to just stay strong. You know what I mean? More vibes cartel, loved ones, in family, all I'm supporters, them just know say yo, it never stop man. Gaza forever man. You understand? Now me I gotta share the footage with you know. Full, full footage with you know of Miss Nita Robinson. You know what I mean? I explain and I tell you know what really I go on. So stay in here, watch the video and remember, like the video, share the video, subscribe, support the movement. One connection or no connection. Renita Roberts in here. Val Renita Roberts, the Queen's Council, representing Mr. Palmer along with Mr. Finson and Miss Kimberly Whitaker, Junior Council.
Thank you, sir. Well, that is it. Could, could you interrogate? Um, they have obviously looking at sentencing, because we argued that wrong, yeah. that the sentence was excessive. And so they are obviously looking at the sentence regime, what the sentence that was passed. I believe um, it was 35 years for Mr. Palmer, mm -hmm. and for the court, it was 25 years. So but there have been many changes to the sentence? No, they, they are saying they wish us to submit to them okay. um, so further they information so that they can take a decision on what is the sentence that will be appropriate oh. um, in the circumstances. Oh. So, so they are particularly asking for time spent in custody. Yes. So we will have to send, we have seven days to send um, that material to them. And then you will hear the, 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 uh, what the sentence is that they think is appropriate. What they will take into account and then they will make a decision on that. Which is an indication that they have already agreed that it should be reduced or they will they will be convinced by the argument specifically. Um they I would say they have already agreed it should be reduced. But as to by how much? Yes. It, it should be reduced, then it will depend on how long each person has been in custody. That seems to be the 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 um center of their um, decision how long they have been in custody until trial. Right. Appreciate it, Yes. Did you did you did you um did you have discussion with Mr. Palmer last evening when you got word of the No, well you know it's it's a, we are on lockdown, COVID lockdown, so um there is no way they're going to allow us in the prison. Um but I we will Mr. Finch and I will communicate with him through the authorities mm -hmm. and then we will um, take a decision on the matter. We actually have spoken to him already on the issue. Um, so we have an idea where we are going. Um, we, are, we were prepared for all eventualities. As we are well aware, we don't sit in the Court of Appeal. Um, so we have to wait on the on this decision. So we have gotten it today. Uh, I believe Mr. Prince is not here, um, but we work together, and I believe we'll be going to the Privy Council. You, you, are you are you surprised by this? Um, no, the public pressure is such um, that there's a lot of negative for vibes cartel um, from certain persons and certain. Um, areas of the society so we expected it but personally and professionally I can tell you uh, my view I was not in the trial remember that I did not do the trial it was Mr. Finson but when I read the transcripts which were 10 volumes it was my view that he did not get a fair trial so we are confident in that and we will be pursuing that well, um, the entire bundles, we have to prepare all the bundles, we have to go for leave, that's the first thing. Um, there are constitutional issues, because you know, fair trial is a constitutional issue. So we will basically be arguing that again. How do you expect that he will be informed of this decision? Well, we, his attorneys, myself and Mr. Finson, will have to contact the, the correctional institution and speak with the officers in charge there and then we will, we could ask to speak to him by phone and they could, just as we did a teleconference a while ago, and then we will inform him. But media being what it is, I'm sure he knows already. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, you are so welcome. If I might ask, um, QC, there have been concerns about his health. Yes. Um, is there anything that you, you could say about that in regards to his health condition and um, if this is something that you know could you possibly could put forward as a 
if there are actually health concerns? Um, the only way those health concerns can be used is had we been or uh, retrial been ordered, and then we would have to go back before the court for bail, oh. and certainly that would help us. Um, but we, especially Mr. Finson, follows up his condition. And when he needs to be taken to the hospital, he is taken. It's not that he's being neglected. Um, he can't be treated in the institution. So you will know from time to time he's taken right. to an appropriate facility right. um, to receive whatever attention is needed. Okay. Any more questions? But people just want to understand what exactly this means now for him because they don't fully understand what that means, okay. what is next. Well, it, basically the court has said that they have, um, they are not allowing the appeal. It's a legal term, but basically it means he stays convicted of the offense of murder until any other court says otherwise. So that is why we would go to the Privy Council. As you know, the Privy Council is the highest court that we can appeal to. Um, and it's more or less the same process that we do here. Much more paperwork. And we will have to retain um, council in England, in the UK, um, Queen's Council. Um, we have persons on standby. We have prepared for all of this. Okay, so if they have denied the appeal, what, what do you need the extra seven days for them? Okay, they have given us seven days to submit some papers. They give us a reasonable time because they know that there's a COVID shutdown right now and state of emergency. So I, I, they have given us sufficient time to get matters, to get the matters before them. It's basically it, not anything great. And then we will hear from them again as to the sentence for each person separately. So the court of it is possible that the court of appeal will reduce the sentence. Oh that's a possibility. I think that is a real possibility. But where it relates to getting him off completely you'll have to go to the privy court. Correct. Okay, thank you. But it means to me, ladies and gentlemen, that the the um, the trial it looks small to you, but to us as legal persons, the fact that they are looking at reducing it um, is something that inures to our benefit. So we will pursue that any, any, with the usual vigor. Right. But any, any, any um, ideas, though, um, vibes seem to have been in, in, you know, positive about the, the possible outcome. Um, any particular reason why he would have? He, yeah, I mean, would have been outside, outside, outside. I mean, <laughs> he seemed almost certain. Yes. Well, listen. It's like everything in life. You face um, a situation which can have dire effect, um, and you remain positive because positivity is what carries you through. Um, look, as I tweeted yesterday, um, you remain positive because the other options are just not what you... Not options. Yeah, they are not options. But, frankly, I believe he was emboldened by the level of the representation in, and the grounds of appeal because we gave him copies and we still are of the view that they are good grounds. Yes. But we don't make those decisions. That's why we are lawyers. We argue until we get what we are satisfied with and, um, and or when we can't argue anymore. With COVID, with COVID running rampant, do you have any ideas to say when that process with the Privy Council would even be able to begin? Uh, that's a very, very, very important question. But we have to go to the Court of Appeal here for leave. We just don't go up there. We have to go for leave. Mm. Here, so there is an intermediate stage before we get there. But sometimes it will take a year. Mm, there about. It's not a quick process. And that's under regular circumstances. Yes, under regular circumstances. It's not a quick process. 
But of course, the UK is under so much stress now, we don't know when the courts will be up. In a case like this, would you now confirm that it would be best if the Caribbean had their own court so that we wouldn't have to go to the Privy Council? Oh, why did you ask me that question? <laughs> I don't believe many people agree with me. And some um, attorneys certainly don't agree with me. We have had many arguments about this. And it's not because our intellectual level um, in Jamaica or in the Caribbean is any less than anywhere else. We have brilliant jurists here. Um, and I have read a lot of judgments from the Caribbean Court of Appeal and I have been kind of shifting my position towards the Caribbean Court of Appeal, um, Court of Justice. But right now I still am in the arena of matters, criminal matters, going before the Privy Council. We have had um, experiences there. Um, we have been fully listened to. And one of the most important things um, is that there has been no bias. The, the Privy Council, they don't know who Vibes Cartel is. They don't know who Valvinita Roberts is. And frankly, they don't care either. So to me, um, our arguments are devoid of any bias. So you believe you'll get a fair trial at the Privy Council? I believe we will be listened to. Um, I believe the grounds are substantial. Um, and I believe, most of all, that no justice system can survive if we don't have fair trial. And that is where this team puts their emphasis. I was alarmed at how this trial proceeded, and I believe all accused persons must get a fair trial. If a jury, having heard all the evidence and if we properly put before, before um, the jury and they take the judgment, that's where, that's where it rests. Where it rests. But I am not satisfied, and that's my professional view and my personal view. I think I just answered my question, but let's give me one more. Yes. You, you, I see you keep making reference to an unfair trial. Mm -hmm. Just explain for our listeners and our viewers mm -hmm. one or two of the areas that you thought were particularly bad in terms of the unfair trial. Okay, um, luckily I refreshed my mind mm -hmm. last, last night. Um, you know, there was a lot of text messages um, taken from phones. And one of the things that the evidence, the prosecution's evidence revealed, this is not defense witnesses, is that the phone from which these text messages were taken was placed um, in a locker by the police officer who received it and that the key for that locker was placed on top of the locker and that persons would have access to the phone. In addition to that, I believe that there were several days there was material on the phone. Um, on the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, um, maybe the 13th and the 14th, which indicated that the phone had been used. That is, somebody was handling the phone. Now, in those circumstances, you can delete. You can change context of messages, texts. You can add. So in, 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 in our view, the phone was compromised because you can manipulate that. And we didn't feel that that should have been left to the jury and the jury should have been made to rely on it. Yes. That is just one of the areas that um, I believe was important. Also, there were cell site um, records that indicated that when the witness said he was in a particular place, the cell site information showed he was over in Portland. In addition to that, at the time that it is said that this thing occurred, 
um, the, the hospital records show that Mr. Palmer was not in Hibley. So, um, those are just a few I can remember, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of, there's a lot of material, including pre-trial um, publication, negative publications. I think you might, you the media might remember that there was some burning down of some digital wires or material, and it was being said that, you know, um, by the authorities who should have known better that it was linked to uh, the case while the case was going on. Those are things that create prejudice and bias. And we believe that um, those would have impacted on the case. Thanks very much, Pastor. You are so welcome. Yes. 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 I want to see if they put it up on the. Can you, can you ask it to call the registrar?